So I plan on doing lots of trips in my Model 3 with bikes on the back. So I wanted to do a little experiment to see how it impacted the range of my Tesla Model 3. First of all, this isn't a very scientific video. It's more of a guide as I didn't repeat the same journey with and without the bike. Instead, I did a one hour drive to London, there with the bike and back without it. I do have a few noteworthy observations. And yes, I was allowed to make this journey during the COVID lockdown, as it was to do with our support bubble with the baby, I just happened to put the bike on the back. First observation is that annoyingly, when you put the Model 3 into towing mode, it isn't very good at predicting how much range you have. I guess it assumes that you're towing a full trailer or caravan, and it estimated that my round trip journey would leave me with 14% battery, when in fact the full journey left me with closer to 45% battery. Another annoying factor is that when in towing mode, you can't engage autopilot, which I understand when you're towing a trailer, but not just with a bike rack. You can get around this by turning the mode off, but then you get constant reminders that the reversing sensors are blocked, so I left it on. So the trip itself was 120 miles there and back. I picked this route as it was mainly motorway miles on a relatively still day with little wind. I put the car in chill acceleration mode and I tried to drive as similarly as possible. Amazingly, I managed to do exactly the same average speed there and back. I stuck the cruise control on at 67 miles per hour on the motorway for the entire journey. Trip one into London with a bike on the back had an average temperature of three degrees and it was six degrees on the way back without the bike. I'm using the app Teslab to analyze the information for the drive. It's a great app with lots of features in their free account. Their paid version is a bit expensive for what I'm interested in, so I just use the free account. It enables you to compare journeys and see your energy use. If you pay for the upgrade to the app, then you can compare over a longer period of time to the free account where you can just see seven days. Okay, so what did I learn? Well, I used 17.8 kilowatts to get there and 14.5 kilowatts to get back. With the bike on the back, I was doing 297 watt hours per mile or 3.36 miles per kilowatt. Without the bike on the back, I was doing 264 watt hours per mile or 3.78 miles per kilowatt. In other words, it was 11% less efficient with the bike carrier on the car. If you've made it this far and you're not a subscriber, then please do subscribe. I'd really appreciate the support. Okay, so I think my poor scientific method could easily equate for plus or minus 5% of that difference. And the increase of three degrees could also play a part. Who knows, but maybe a percent or two. I think my lesson learned is that it does impact range having the bikes on the back. And for my future calculations, I'll probably allow about 7% reduction with the bike on the back. Although having said that, over 60 miles, the car used an additional 3.3 kilowatts. Let's expand that and say that I've driven 180 miles. Well, then that would have been 9.9 .9 extra kilowatts, which sounds like a lot. But when you think plugged into a supercharger, that would be an extra six minutes of charging on a 150 kilowatt charger. I have a 300 mile round trip coming up in June with two bikes on the back if we're allowed to do it. So I'll report back after that too. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested. I hope you found this video useful. Please remember to click the thumbs up icon as it helps others find the video too. Cheers.